First and foremost, all the honors and praises belong to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Mahavah Kakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahweh Shai. And who I reverence? Honors to the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, very few brothers and sisters also listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days because you know we're living in the last days or the last days right it's going to be a quickie because i'm just waiting to process these videos it it takes a bit of time right but i'm just, just going to be based on the beauty of a woman i don't do much videos on women the beauty of a woman so let's go let's go let's go where is that where was that ecclesiastes 36 and 21 Right, you know what? Go to verse 22. The beauty of a woman cherish the countenance. Man, <laughs> have you ever seen the woman that's so beautiful? You could be having a bad day, you see the woman that's so beautiful that cheers up your whole countenance. You be having just a bad day, and you, you, you run into a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman that cheers your countenance, right. And it says, check this out. And a man loveth nothing better. Let me read that again. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Right? That must be, bro. For a beauty of a woman to cheer your countenance, she must be look, she must look real good. Right? And a man loving nothing better. I forgot where it was. There was a what a war. I don't know where, where it is in the scriptures. And this woman was so beautiful, they all stopped fighting for one second. <laughs> and they all ended up looking at it. I forgot where it was. If you brothers can find it, find it. Right? Bro. The ancient women of our tribes, bro, they were stunning. The scriptures talked about Leah. Leah was tender-eyed and so forth. But Rachel was um Rachel was more beautiful, right? The women of our nation, bro. Let's go. And a man loveth nothing better, right? Nothing better than a, and the beauty. Now it's not just, it's not just outward. The beauty is not just outwardly, right? Because let's be honest, none of you, <laughs> no brothers really want to get with a woman that's ugly, right? But listen, listen, you you can have a woman that's quite. She ain't the best looking, but her personality is good. Then you could have a woman that's beautiful. On the outside, but her personality, she's ugly on the inside. So it makes her ugly outside. But there's nothing better than the beauty of a woman. And I'm just flying with the spirit right now. If there be kindness, meekness, oh my, this is even better. See, if there be kindness, meekness, right? Meekness and comfort in her tongue, right? Them things there. Right? Ren is not her husband. Ren is not her husband like other men. Right? So, we go go into these women, man. See what else there is. Ecclesiastes 13. The grace of a wife, the light of her husband. Right? And her discretion will fatten his bones. Right? Make him better. A silent and loving woman. Check this out. A silent and loving woman. It says silent. Right? Not talking all the time. Not trying to talk over you. Right? Is a gift. Right? Of the Lord. Yahweh Shai. And there is nothing. Key thing. And there is nothing. So much worth as a mind well instructed. Verse 15, a shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace and her continent mind cannot be valued. Let's go, so it's talking about a shamefaced and faithful woman. It's talking about, that's a double grace to you. And it also says her continent mind cannot be valued. You cannot put a price upon that. As the sun when it riseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the order of her house. So 
it's not just the beauty, it's the thing she does as well that adds to that beauty. This ain't going to be a long one because I don't want to spend like 30 minutes talking on women and I don't want to do all that. Right? But from time to time, we do these lessons. As the light is upon the holy candlestick, right? So is the beauty of a face in ripe old age as well. Right? As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver, so are the fair feet with a constant heart. Um What else? What else? What else? What else? Let's see if there's anything else concerning these women. Mm. Ain't nothing better than that. Mm. A, a woman that actually listens. Mm. Um a little bit more. Right? It says, check this out. Hold on just a minute. See if I can find it. Ecclesiastes 26 and 3. A good wife is a good portion which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. So a good wife, you're going to have a good portion of those that are given to those that actually do fear the Lord. So if you have a good wife, that's a good portion. And it says, to those that do fear the Lord. Huh? So if you fear the Lord, that's what you're gonna be given. A double, a double grace, right? To those that fear the Lord. And really, what's that as well? That's the beginning of wisdom. So if you really have a woman that fears the Lord, that means she's gonna fear you first. Because you have a lot of women that say, um, I fear the most high. I fear the most high. I don't have to answer to any man. I d bro, watch out for women that say that. God told me. God told you this. God told you that. Usually that's through a man. Right? You're supposed to fear your man first. Right? So Lord willing. Hold on. I'll go a little while longer. Right? So really, the revelations really comes from another prophet now women has women do have dreams because it does say that in acts and your daughters shall have dreams and your sons as well shall prophesy so that is indicative of the end but a lot of the times the women would go to a man or a prophet and that would be expounded that revelation would be expounded unto them okay Let's see what else we got. See what else we got. Baba Kesha. Mm. I mean, not all women were wicked, but yeah, most of them were. If you do have a woman that's faithful, then you guess what? You're lucky. <laughs> but very far few. And in between, because Solomon, what did Solomon say? Solomon said that of a thousand women, he found not one, not one single woman that was righteous not one all right not one mm. see what else we can find you can bear me just a minute um and solomon solomon was a player look how much women solomon had as well all right he had enough women and the sin wasn't Solomon, his sin wasn't taking the women of different nations. Because in war, when you take over a nation or you're a king, you have women of the other nations, right? But the thing is, the reason why in the Old Testament it was told you don't marry them, you don't take on their, because you would take on the ways of their fathers and they tried to get you to worship their idols. Solomon was building temples to these women, the, the, the concubines, to their idols. That's where the sin was. The sin wasn't with him getting with different women of different nations. Right? Because we all have a variety and flavours. Guess what? I don't just like so-called so black women. I like so-called Japanese women. So-called Indian women. Like, I like women of ordinary <laughs> Serbian women. Like, bro... In the kingdom, we're going to be, there's, there's going to be different women. Even though, yet yeah, the Israelite woman, she's going to be there. But we're going to have different women. 
all right? Simple as that. You can't be getting emotional over something like that. We're going to have different women in the kingdom. All right? And that is, it is scriptural. All right? Even Solomon. All right? He had different women. Bear me just a minute. Let me pause this. A lot of men are going to get offended now. Now, this is the law. And remember, we're living in a different time now. So, a lot of men are emotional. Right? Look at them ancient films with the Vikings and, you know, Lion's Heart and all that stuff. Listen, in war, and it still happens today. Ask anyone that's in the military, the Navy, SAS. It still happens today. When they go to Iraq, what, you think they don't sleep with them same women that are captives? You think they don't do that? Bro, all that goes on. All of it. Right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 21 and 10. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, check this out, and the Lord you have shall have delivered them into thine hands. Right, key thing delivered them. Right, check this out. Thou hast taken them captive. Thou seest among also the captives. Right? So it says, Thou seest among the captives a beautiful woman and has desire unto her. Right? Thou wouldest have her to wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house. And she shall shave her head and pare her nails. This according to the law. And it's the law of the Heavenly Father. You take her home and you're going to pare her nails. Remember, this is if the husband's gone. The husband's dead. And remember, she's a captive. Right? And pare her nails. Cut her nails off. And you cut her hair off. Alright? See, this. I know this, this sounds too extreme. See... These things, it sounds extreme to the world, but these things still go on within certain cultures. And it's basic. Even what? What do you think was going on in World War One, World War Two? All that was going on. And she shall put on the raiment of her captivity, the raiment that you've given her to put on, from off her, and she shall remain in her house and bewail her father and her mother for a full month. Right? And after that, she shall go in and... After that, thou shalt go in unto her. What does that mean? Have sex. Right? And be her husband. So this shows you sex is marriage. What they teach you in the church, they say, um, no, you got to go to church, you got to go to the wedding and put a ring on the finger and now you're officially married. No, the marriage was sex. Marriage is sex. That's what consummates the marriage. And be her husband, and she shall be thy wife, and it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, now if you want to divorce her, I think it is, thou shalt then let her go, whether she will, but thou shalt not sell her at all for money. So you can let her go, but you don't sell her for any type of money, because then you would be, that, that, that would be prostituting. Right? And it says, get out of here, Satan. Flee, Satan. Bear me just a minute. Got people doing these stupid, these stupid bird sounds. All that witchcraft. And it says, But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. The humbling was through sin. You know you can humble? You know you humble women, that's another way, way you humble women, through sexual intercourse. That's how you humble a woman. Okay. So, um, that's, yeah, that's, basic, that's basically it. That's basically it. If thou would see a woman, a beautiful, and this is, she would have to be a captive in warfare. You, you're, not, you're, not just, you're not just taking her. This ain't talking about adultery. This is what you, you've, you went into that land, you've taken over that land, you went to war, and there's women left over, which are known as booty. Booty means spoil, spoils of war. You could take her. And she would need to pare her nails off for a certain amount of time and hair. And mourn for her father and mother, because they you may not see them again for a long time. Right? When you go in unto her and get busy. When therefore you're married. So yeah, you can also have wives, yeah. Wives of the other nations, but they would be known as lesser wives. Just like you had Hagar, which was um Hagar, Hagar, Hagar. Who did, who is who she can see? Was it by Isaac? Was it Jacob or Isaac? You had Hagar, right? 
and Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. But then there was another seed, but Jacob was more what loved. No, not Jacob, um, Isaac was more, was, was the, the promise was to Isaac. The promise wasn't to Ishmael. But Ishmael was blessed, right? He was blessed with, what, 12 princes, right? And a lot of land, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and so forth. So all throughout the scriptures, you did have concubines as well. And they were lesser wives, okay? Lesser wives. So I'm going to shut off here. All right, Lord willing, this was edifying. And until my next one, shut up one.